Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Hey, okay, I'm super excited for today's video because it's a sneak peek of my brand new course, Musical Income, which comes out next week. Now, Musical Income will show you how to create a sustainable side income step-by-step -step as a music freelancer. So whether you wanna be a recording engineer, mix engineer, mastering engineer, producer, even live sound engineer, when they let us do live sound again, when things get back to normal, Musical Income will show you how, step by step. To make sure you hear about it when it comes out, just go to musicalincome.com or click the link below this video to sign up on the waiting list. That way you'll be notified the moment it's available because it's only be open for a limited time. But what I wanted to do today was give you a sneak peek of one of those videos. In this video, I share with you a step-by-step -step blueprint for making money as a mixing and mastering engineer. So without further ado, enjoy this sneak peek. All right, welcome to the mixing and mastering blueprint video. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step plan that you can use to start your mixing and mastering business. I'm also gonna look at some examples of mixing mastering engineers on sound better we'll take a look at some of the pricing uh, their profiles how they're setting it up give you some ideas and then share with you some of my best tips and strategies for being a mixing or mastering engineer okay let's walk through all of this together i will just say that your step-by-step -step plan is also available in a downloadable checklist right here so download that checklist so you can walk along with us mark it off as you go. And so you know exactly what to do first, second, and third, not just watch it in a video, but have it tangibly in front of you. And the first step really starts with you. You need to determine your minimum target monthly income. So do you want this to be a part-time income stream? Do you wanna make $1,000 a month doing this or $2,000 a month doing this? Write that down. Do you want to replace your day job? If so, how much is your day job? But actually better than that, have a lower amount, something that's the minimum. What's the minimum you would want this business to create to just pay your bills? You might have a dream amount and you'll get there over time, but what's the minimum target monthly income goal? You gotta know what you're shooting for. I prefer monthly over annually because monthly is how we live. We pay everything by the month for the most part. So what do you need to bring in per month? What is your goal? And I would start lower than you think. That way you get encouraged, you get some practice, you start making some money, you build clientele, you will always be able to grow it from there. So figure out that monthly amount that you wanna make with this business. Then write out your ideal client. We've talked about how important having an ideal client is, not just any client. You don't wanna work with anybody and everybody that wants to mix or master with you. You want to work with people you wanna work with. And so writing this down, having it in a Google Doc somewhere in front of you, who they are, what kind of person they are, what kind of budget they have, their likes or dislikes is really helpful for you when you create your website or sound better profile, or even social media platforms, right? It helps you position yourself and speak to them in the right way so you're only speaking to your ideal client and nobody else. You don't need everybody to work with you, just the right people. So write this out if you haven't done that already. You're gonna wanna build your portfolio. So important, no one's gonna hire you without a portfolio. Why would they? They shouldn't. This is your credibility, as you know, so make sure you get those songs you're gonna to put together for your online presence as your portfolio. Next, determine your rates. How much are you gonna charge for your services? Again, this is not gonna be the ultimate landing place for you because as part of the freelance arc, you're gonna be able to increase your rates over time, but determine your rates for now. What are your rates going to be? You decide that have them set in stone for now. Then you're gonna to wanna to build your website. Go ahead and walk through that material, build your simple website, your online presence there, and then of course create your sound better profile so that you can get even more clients through that. It's just a great, great platform. And this is the step-by-step -step plan for you to start becoming a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer. So let's look at some example rates and some example sound better profiles for mixing engineers and mastering engineers. See what they're charging, see how they're laying out their profiles. Let's take a look. So there's so many, I get it. There's so many on sound better, but just looking through it, uh, here are a couple that I came across. Rob Murray from Austin, Texas. Look at this, 738 reviews. This is where Sound Better really starts to work for you. Any reviews you get, 
especially if you work with somebody, please have them review. It only gives you more credibility. Um, so we see that he's got a lot of people who've worked with him and five stars is his average review. Very, very cool. Uh, he's got his bio here. Looks like he's engineered on some big projects like Sia and uh, Wiz Khalifa and Gavin DeGraw, Britney Spears, Mark Ronson. So he, he's been in, in the room working on a lot of these tracks. Um, he's got some, you know, some portfolio stuff right here you can take a look at. You can see his credits. But then look at this. Look at his pricing. $300 to mix a song. I think that's a pretty good deal, honestly. Mastering, 80 bucks per song. So it gives you an idea. Here's a guy who's worked with some big, big people, and that's what he's charging per song. He gives you terms of service, so you get three revisions max for mixing. Editing and tuning are not included. So that's good to know, right? So he's making that clear. Mastering, you get one revision, and then he has a la carte pricing for alternate mixes or recalls, things like that. And then he has a deal. If I do a single or a mix and a master, only 350. And then look, look at these reviews. Just this is awesome. QA. This is an ideal situation, right? Uh it's he's letting his his review speak for himself. Fantastic. Here's another guy, Martin, based out of London in the UK. Look at that, 178 reviews, five stars. Uh, and I love this opening line here, clear, engaging musical mixes. So he started with the benefit. He didn't say, hi, I'm Martin, although he does say that. He didn't start with that. He starts clear, engaging, and musical mixes. That's how he's describing his mixes. I think he meant to say fast communication, but he said fat communication. <laughs> so maybe he needs to spell check or, or uh, proofread his uh, first sentence, at least the first sentence. But maybe he likes fat communication. Maybe that's the words. Is that what the kids say these days that I just don't know about? But fast delivery, I'm, I'm getting where he's going, right? He's got his sample work right here. Look at this. He's worked with, alongside Yod, Nevo. I mean, big people. He's, his stuff has gotten number one placements on iTunes. Um, he's worked with some cool people. He's got some some credibility. Uh, and he's charging 250 to mix. And he's charging 70 to master. So a little bit cheaper than the last guy. Gives you an idea of sort of the genres he works in. Although these are all over the place. Pop, all the way to Bollywood, to metal. All very different. Um but he talks about the different, he can do stem mastering for EDM. So he kind of just walks through what he does, a little bit all over the place. Um, but again, he's got just reviews. He's got clear pricing. He's got his, his uh, portfolio right there. Beautiful. And then here's one, mutonal music. I'll make your song legit. I like that. Cool hair too. Cool hair, Hansel. All right. Um, he's based in LA. He's got 17 five-star reviews, which is still great. Again, seeing any reviews is great. Not as many, but I love it. And what he's got is a before and after demo. And he's saying, look, take a listen to my demo to hear real before and after examples of clients I've worked with. I like this. This is a confident move to say, here's what I've done before and after. But let's look at his pricing. $700 to mix your song. That's more than twice the amount of Rob, who's got hundreds of views, reviews, and has worked with major artists. I don't know any of these artists he's worked with, but it could just be a genre thing. Um, so what's interesting is that he's able to charge that amount and he's got some good reviews. Look at this, two months ago. Words cannot even describe how amazing Mutonal is from beginning to end. Look at this, another great job. He delivered just the right treatment to get us back on track. He, they're trying to get the drum sound right. Great drum sound. So I have a feeling that he can specialize. He's focusing on electronic stuff, dubstep, hip hop, house. And this is a great example of, if that's true, specializing, you can charge more the right people are going to be willing to pay it, and he's charging it. So these are just three examples of mixing and mastering engineers who have different price points, 
but you can see kind of what they're doing with their sound better profiles, gives you some ideas, but definitely take some time, look around and compare some other ones to get inspired to know kind of where your pricing should land and how you should set up your sound better profile. I just want to walk you through just some of my tips on running mixing sessions. Um, I think mastering can apply to this as well, but mastering sessions are a little bit easier to run than mixing. So if you're focusing on being a mix engineer, this will help you think through how to ch pump these out in a timely manner and get great consistent results um, coming from someone who's been mixing records for 15, 20 years um, and having to work quickly. I would say set your timer. I'm a big advocate of working under the clock, working focus. So Set a timer for your initial static mix. Set it and then mix quickly. And then when it beeps, move on to the next part, which is usually your core mix work where you're doing all the EQ and the compression, the heavy lifting, the stuff that's really sculpting the sound. And set a timer. You decide how much time, but set a timer for that. And when that timer beeps, you have to stop, move on to the sweetening stage, right? Where you can really enhance the mix from there and work from beginning to end and automation, all that kind of stuff. And then the timer goes off. And use the 80-20 rule to make this happen. Like, look at all the things you do in a mix and ask yourself, what are the 20% of the mix moves that I'm doing that really give me 80% of the sound? And I'm gonna focus on those. Not that you don't wanna go 100% of the way, but you need to know what's the most important thing to be working on to get a really good sounding mix. Because when you do this for a living and you're pumping out mixes, you wanna satisfy your clients, but you don't need to have the perfect mix because that'll take you forever and it's not possible to get the perfect mix. You want a killer mix and you can do that by doing the 80-20 rule. Just focus on the 20% that really makes the mix stand out. Also, keep in mind Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is this phenomenon in our lives that states work will always expand to fill the time allotted to it. So if you give yourself five hours to mix a song, it's gonna take you five hours. If you give yourself 10 hours to mix a song, it's gonna take you 10 hours. If you give yourself two hours to mix a song, it'll take you two hours. Why? Because that's the way work works. It expands to whatever we give it, and if it's a tighter deadline, we become focused and we have to deliver. So I like to use it not only a timer, but tight deadlines to force me to mix fast. Also, have an outline, right? Know what you're gonna do first, second, third, or fourth. Have a plan. So I like to start with the 20-minute mix. I loop the song and I just press play for 20 minutes, trying to just get volume and pan where I want it. That's all I do. I don't use plugins. I just use volume and pan for 20 minutes. Then I like to move on to mixing in mono. I like to collapse the mix to mono and try to get my EQ and compression right so the mix pops and sounds great, all you know, collapse onto itself in mono, and, and then I know I'm in a good spot. Then I'll flip it back to stereo and work on the reverbs and the delays and make any fine-tune adjustments. Then I'll pull in a reference track if I haven't already to say, okay, what does my mix sound like compared to a professional mix? Is it really... Uh, close? Is the low end close? Is the top end close? What about the vocal level? Is that off? And I'll make adjustments to all that stuff. Then I'll focus on automation and small tweaks. Do I need to automate any effects? Do I want to automate panning? Um, do I want to bring up the level or ride the faders of drum fills, vocals, bass fills, things like that? Uh, and then I will check my mix on other speakers, my crappy mono speaker, my headphones if I haven't already, uh, AirPods, um, my iPhone, laptop, all that stuff. So whatever your outline is, this is just mine. Whatever your outline is, have it. Like if you need to, write it down so that you aren't just aimlessly mixing the song, especially if you're gonna be pumping these out. You wanna have a plan. When it comes to delivering your mixes to the client, always deliver the first mix early for feedback if you're doing an album. I used to not do this. I used to just get the, the files, mix the whole album, deliver the whole album. And then I would find out that there's something about all the songs they didn't like. And if I had only known that on the first song, it would have made all the other songs better. So what I like to do now is when I get an album, let's say, or I'm doing a collection of songs, focus on one mix first, deliver that and say, hey, I want to make sure I'm in the ballpark of where you want this, these mixes to land. Get that initial feedback on the first one. That will help you then go finish all the other mixes and you'll be 80% of the way there before the revisions. And that's what I would suggest is 
do the one, but then deliver the rest at the end in a batch, okay? So don't just keep sending mix after mix after mix, just that one to make sure you're on the same page with the artist. But once you get that feedback and you make those tweaks, then just work in isolation on the rest of the album. I would say sleep on your mixes. So when you're done, don't don't fire them off. Don't don't bounce it down and send it off. Have at least one day separation. Wake up, come in the next day because you'll always hear something and you'll instantly know what it is. It's not like you need to fix a million things. It's usually just a little balance here or there to adjust. So always sleep on your mixes. And then I would just say don't overthink or over tweak. I think that's the death of many engineers is there's insecurity. Of course, we want to deliver a great mix. We don't want anyone to be upset with the mix. It could always be better. I get that. But that leads to overthinking, over tweaking, which doesn't help you. The more you do this, the longer it takes, the less money you make per hour, basically, because they're not paying you more to work more if you're doing a per project rate or flat rate, which I think you should. Uh, so it doesn't help you. And remember the 80-20 rule. Really, you're already 80% of the way there if you focus on the 20% of the mix moves. The, all that extra tweaking might make it 85% of the way there, but it's still going to be good. So is it really worth it? And finally, expect revisions. Oh, yes. You shouldn't need too much time for this, but you should expect them. Just like we saw on some of those Sound Better profiles, they talk about how many revisions are included and what it costs for additional revisions. This is normal. This is a collaborative creative project. We're working together with the artist. So expect them, um, but don't expect to spend a ton of time on them. They should be quick things like, oh yes, I can change that. Yep. I can do that. You shouldn't have to remix the entire song from scratch unless there's some major disconnect you have with the artist. And again, if there are no revisions, the way I think about it is you make more money. If I've baked in a couple revisions and the time it would take to do that on average into my flat rate pricing, if I don't have any revisions, then it's like I made more money because I got that mix done faster. So that's always cool. But on the flip, don't be defensive with the revisions. If people have tweaks or criticism or like, hey, I don't like that sound, it's not personal. It's their music. Do whatever they need. Serve the client. It's part of the process. So again, those are some of my mixing tips to be a remote mixer, a remote mastering engineer. Be collaborative have an outline, work with a timer. And as you go through this blueprint that you hopefully downloaded, again, it's here in the video, download it, print it out. As you go through the blueprint and step-by-step -step work your way to setting up your mixing and mastering business, spend time looking at these other Sound Better profiles, look at a bunch more and get a sense of which ones present themselves in certain ways, what's the pricing and find where you want to land and what you want to include and what you don't want to include in your Sound Better profile and on your website. Very, very helpful resource to have. I think you're really, really gonna enjoy the process. Now, I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek of musical income. The video you just watched show you the what you need to do, but the entire musical income course unveils the complete how to turn your music skills into a sustainable income stream. This includes how to set up your website quick and easily how to set up your Sound Better profile strategically so you get more clients, how to use Facebook and Instagram to get clients organically, and how to have your services and website show up in Google search rankings in your area. This course leaves no stone unturned and it is the most comprehensive course I have put together on the subject of making an income from your audio skills. And if you like the mixing and mastering blueprint today, in the course, you're gonna get a blueprint for how to make a living as a recording engineer, a producer, a session musician, and a live sound engineer. I'm so excited for you to join this course because the way this year has gone, it's just been so discouraging to see so many people struggle financially. So I feel like I've been able to put together all the tools and resources that you need to create a sustainable income using your music skills. And the thing is, there are over 40,000 new songs being uploaded to Spotify every single day. That's a lot of people releasing a lot of music and they all need help in one way, shape or form in their music releasing process and you can help them with that music release. There has literally never been a better time to be involved in the music industry. So I hope you'll join Musical Income when it opens up next week. It's only open for a limited time, so click the link below or go to musicalincome.com to get on the waiting list. Otherwise, you'll miss your chance to join this course because the doors will be closing shortly after I open them next week. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the course when it opens next week.